friendly greetings. <laughs> you cannot see my face quite, but have faith. It is I, Torley, the watermelon guru. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about how to play a romantic piano. It may be one in a series. I like to emphasize words, but to the point, I want to show you how easy it is to really get started. Some really puffed up in both the literal and figurative sense, pianists like to stroke their egos by making it more difficult than it really is. But at the core of romantic piano traditions, just like your heart beats, boom, 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 it's really quite simple. And even though they may be swirly, swash, fancy things like that, at the basis, I'll show you some of the basics and how to build them up like blocks. And to use a great analogy, this one I enjoy anyway, like if you know Sylar from the show Heroes and how he likes to cut into someone's head and, and look at their brain to examine how their power works. Same thing with me and the musicians that I admire, except I'm not quite so antagonistic and violent and morally ambiguous. But anyway, let's get started with this very simple example. Let's take a minor third, and if you don't, if you don't know music theory, hopefully you can follow the keys, and pardon if the, the webcam frame rate isn't as smooth as possible, but I hope the screen is. So, just these two notes. And you can improvise a melody on the right hand, and you say, oh, I don't know how to improvise. Don't worry, it's actually very easy. Just hit any of the white keys, okay? It's like I said, it's really simple. Even if you play with one finger like that, even if you've never really had too much experience, you do need some experience. Oh, I just hope my pedal is kind of <laughs> unwieldy, but let's do that again. Okay. And keep in mind throughout this program, there is going to be rather some banter and lengthy discourse from me. Hopefully you'll find it entertaining as well as actual practical application of such performance techniques. So see. Simple like that. And you might think, wait a minute, that doesn't sound too romantic. That's kind of sad or creepy or sounds like that equation theme in Fringe. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. That's because you resolve from a minor third to a major third. So you move up like that. So let's try that again with a different improvisation because I don't remember what I played last time. <laughs> Here we go. And now it sounds happier, right? Something just really simple that way. And they got fancy Italian names for many of these things. This, if you keep doing a repeated figure, it'd be an ostinato. It's used in a lot of Philip Glass music. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and when you start veering up the chords, even if it's just very simple. Now let's make it more of an elaborate right hand but the left hand will remain simple. And I'm gonna go into more depth about some of these techniques. And by the way, the piano sampled instrument I'm playing is from the, the Braunschweig Upright Imperfect Samples by Matt Stiddeford. I believe his name is pronounced. If I got it wrong, I will correct it later. Okay, so let's look at something slightly different but related. So we have the key of C major, like that, da -da -da, right? So one, three, five, my fingers, C, E, G, like that. And another chord is F minor, F, and then you'd have an A flat, and then a C, or white note, black note, white note, space like this, if you don't know the notes. These chords are like, what does it mean? Well, so many cliched romantic songs use them. And to prove that to you, I just go quiet for a few moments and just play just those two chords. And it's one of my favorite examples, okay? Thank you. 
one of the reasons why I'm teaching you romantic piano specifically is not just because of the cliches, but because coming from the heart, if you're a guy or even your girl, you can impress the opposite sex or same sex if you're into that. Uh, <laughs> but it's just all about love and passion helps you learn something faster. So let's look at that again. And this time let's add a third chord G. So it's not tricky at all. Okay. Like, and to have it sound less blocky and chunky, you want to roll them. So rolls. Da -da -da. Sorry. <laughs> Just practice that. And you could come like this. And if you don't know what notes to improvise with, just hit one that's in the same chord as you're playing left hand because you know they're octaves like this. So it's not the most beautiful, but it's simple. <laughs> when, you, when you really get into this and you build up a massive list of artificial credentials, you can do things like this. It's just swoosh, swoosh. Oh, that's another thing. A trill or a, the first part of it anyway. You use that to kind of make a butterfly fluttering kind of Disney sound. You know, just do that until you do it faster. So. That's probably overdoing it, but you often hear that in a lot of romantic themes. So you can put these elements together, like that first ostinato, whatever it's called, and blend it like this. Watch. And it really is that simple. And you're saying, he's moving so fast if you're a new pianist, but really, it's just one note after another, just roll it, roll it, roll it, roll it. And it does take a lot of practice, it really does. I mean, Malcolm Gladwell says magic hours, 10,000 hours for true expertise in any area. I don't know for certain about that. It sounds good, but if you just keep doing at it, and if your heart's on fire for someone you love too, it'll accelerate the learning process because you want to learn songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so um, with left hand chords, you have a wide variety of choices. As long as often you put yourself in emotion, there will be a lot of emotion. And if you do something simple again, like like that. I can play, you know, my middle finger. It's kind of rude. Whoops. <laughs> so it's me, right? <laughs> But one note melodies can be so simple and yet so beautiful. You don't need to overcomplicate things. But what is especially powerful is when you have a contrast. Like you have a lot of these swirlies. And you have then moved to a simpler passage. And like I said, you don't, if you don't know many chords, just start off with the C major and the F minor. And then you mix it in with, with a little bit of G major. like that well, all the time when I was younger I just used to just plunk around singles and just build up and sometimes hit random notes because you don't know where that leads sometimes that leads into sort of a dissonance that you need to resolve which something we can go into later but if you want a quick example it'd be like like, like horrible sounds it, not romantic in itself but then it gets like jazz something like that 
that's more advanced. But again, let's just focus on some of the really simple basic essentials. These are the skills I want you to come away with once you really nail these principles. So another thing, of course, is you can move on from the two note thing to a three note thing like that. See, whoops, I'm in that. <laughs> and here's another chord progression you absolutely cannot go wrong with. So many pop songs use this, so many electronic dance music hits too. You go from A minor, G major, F major, and sometimes a C major, but just those three are good. Like, you know. Like house piano, but in the romantic sense, okay? Again, you roll it. Don't make, don't make it so stiff. You gotta play from your heart. It's gotta have soul. Like that, just roll it. Can you serenade someone with this? Of course you can. See, I'm rolling uh, like echoes a little bit softer each time. And just these three chords. And remember F minor? There, see? Now this one's something I call a twirly swirl. <laughs> Not to be confused with a twirly swirl, although, hey, it could be. It's really simple to do one of those too, actually. Again, you start off just knowing the notes. So you gotta, you clump it down. And then you roll. And you hold down the pedal. Like that, see? So lovely. You just repeat an octave up and you de uh, you decrease the space between them. So mixed with the basic techniques like what we just learned. <laughs> it's wonderful filler, isn't it? These are all really simple things. Like, I promise you, these are the secrets that are revealed for you to see. And of course, they're always in plain sight when you hear the music. Sometimes you just got to coax them out and know which are the right notes to play and in which order. Now, things like enharmonic transposition, all that uh, fancy schmancy stuff, that's more of an advanced thing. But these are the, the foundations upon which you build your heart. And improvisation is a great way to really let that, that flow. Sometimes I just go into a jam with a few chords and I'll make a beautiful melody. So let me go ahead and show you something more finished of what it might sound like, okay? And then I'll go and talk about some of the, the sort of little techniques that are used often by, by Yanni, George Winston. Uh, there's a lot of Jan Tiersen. There's certain techniques that, that are just so commonly used in, in different sort of ways. It's like looking at the, the same gemstone through different magnifying glasses, perhaps. <laughs> Something, oh, that's a bad analogy. Let me get on with it. Okay, so you know, you saw some of the swirly swirls, some of the same sorts of things, breaking up the broken chords is just great like that. You gotta imagine being wishy-washy in the best of ways. And within all of these are sort of the pillars of, of course, you have the solid chord and you wanna keep moving. Um, for purposes of intensity, you either have a left hand pattern that keeps going like that. In 
And sometimes you pause for contrast. So it's not all heartbeat, heartbeat, heartbeat. It's kind of like you're racing in the field to meet your lover and then you have a nice warm hug and the mood kind of changes, it gets more intense. Now let's look at, I realize I'm kind of an anarchist this way, jumping all over the map, but nonetheless, all these connections, these roads, they lead to the same, I'm just checking to make sure it's still recording, places. So one of them, of course, I was showing you like that. And another one is like, you just let it slip. And another one's like the tour in the pirouette. And that's really easy. I mean, let's say go speed racer. And just um, practice that until you're like, again, overdoing it here. But for the sake of illustration, practicing. Another one that Yanni often uses, if you're into his stuff, I like some of it very much. He's considered one of the masters of romantic piano and synthesizer music. Well, he'll often do this thing where it's like do 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 in different ways. And you can make it very romantic. <laughs> like that, so practice that. Dun 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 It works the opposite way. See, all these little things, you're going to find them coming up time and time and time again. And speaking of time and time and time and time and again, in the repetitious sense is, of course, Philip Glass. Now, a lot of his stuff is not considered just romantic, but there's certainly a lot of emotion. It moves a lot of people from Koyana Skatsi to the more recent soundtracks, like For the Hours and such and such. He's just a great that way. He really gets a lot of mileage. He's kind of like green power come to the piano keys. Oh, and... One of the things he does extremely well is just repeating a figure over and over until it's like, oh, it's so hypnotic. And then he changes it. He changes it up. And then it varies. And you're like, wow, that was an impact. Like, let's take an, an A minor chord, but let's extend it with the E there. Okay. So let's. And if that's too fast, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll slow it down. Okay, and if you practice with your left hand too, then it's like. And then we'll move to, remember that other chord? F minor. And hold on the pedal. And just go like that. There we go. Is that starting to sound like? And octave. F. Like that. C major. And let's really speed it up now, okay? So. And slow down. Some rubato. Sounds impressive, it's just the same thing being played over and over and just change lightly. C major. And this is E minor. Or I mean E major. Sorry. <laughs> Right? Yes? And that's another rhythm that's often used. Boom, 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 boom. Whoop, don't go to sleep. Uh, like, sounds like. And it can be varied in all sorts of ways. But Philip Glass's music is just a fantastic way 
to get that across because you're doing a lot with so little. And it works with any chord really, like remember I showed you earlier. I'm going to talk a little bit about octaving after this, and that will conclude the end of this well, first lesson. You can let me know if you like more, but a little look at that again, okay? So it's like, remember, it's just... And believe me, so much of this is experimentation. You could read stuff in books, but more importantly, listen to a lot of music and try to emulate, try to copy it, and like myself, deconstruct what's going on. So when we get to something like, remember what we had before? The C major and the F minor. Octave. Whoops. Major there. So octaves are another powerful way to bring out uh, voices and I have a long keyboard. It's you're not seeing all the keys, but instead of like just E, you have an E octave. Instead of just G, you have a G octave. So that's you know uh, to get an octave is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ah! Twelve tones. Oh, excuse me. Twelve tones, twelve tones, and this is a good way of adding weight to melody if it's getting repeated. Like, um, for example, I'll do a simple one here, and if we want to be, you'd see that if you couldn't, I'll repeat down here. Another way is you start rolling, just. Just really beautiful like that. So the takeaway from this, the key lessons, of course, don't do solid chords if you're aiming for a fragility, uh, serenity, sort of tranquil flow. You always want to break them up. So instead of hitting, you don't hit everything at once unless you're doing it forcefully. Uh, like you, like there we go. But then if you go like bum 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 bum, bum that's cool too. Okay, another thing, of course, there's just a lot of stuff you build from basic chords. You don't need to get all complicated and uh, get into a tonal music concrete or anything like that. Just you speak from your soul. Even if you don't change the chord on the left hand, like we left it there. So you know, so I'm kind of breaking up even. And now you change it for octave. And often with rhythm, you have, uh, I mean, with romance, you have rhythm that's not totally dun 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 to the metronome. You slow down, you quicken. It's quite elastic and delicious, like taffy. So, I hope this has encouraged you to explore the world of romantic piano. And I am Torley, presenting. <laughs> I can do my own voiceovers, this rocks. Please indulge me with your curiosities and go to twirly.com for more lovely fun. I bet there will be more, especially if you ask me. Now I'll let you know, because like I said, or like I do like to say, if you don't let me know, then I don't know. So thanks for letting me know, because then I do know. Oops. That's okay. It's all right. <laughs> and since you say to the end, let me just do a sudden improvisation. I've never played this piece before. I do know chords, and I'm just putting them all in a combination. So let's go for it. Mm -hmm. 